Okay, we actually ended up doing some other things today, so we didn't quite get all the way through the lesson. This is uh, 7-3, and bottom of page 279, 4 and 5, find the sum, and it says use fraction strips to help. We've talked about these. They may or may not help some of you. So for this one here, I mean, you don't have to go through and fill in the boxes here. I'm just looking for the answer of, of simply 1 half, and we're adding uh, 2 fifths. And you'll have to figure out the common denominator. I think you guys can do that by now. I think you recognize that it would be 10. Uh, number five is a little different here. I wanted to show you guys something. So what are we talking about here? One six plus one third plus one six. I'm gonna put it on a sticky note here. It might be a little bit easier to see. So it was one sixth plus one third plus one sixth. It's three fractions, oh my gosh. Well, the first thing I want you to notice is that two of them have the same common denominator, the 1 sixth and the 1 sixth. And if I was just to write 1 sixth plus 1 sixth and ask you what that equals, most of you should know by now that since they have the same denominator, you could just add the top, the numerators. What's that going to be? 2 sixths. So in a way, we're, we're kind of done with, with those. So I'm breaking this this down so it's a little bit easier to work with. So now what do we have left? We have one third. So it's really just one third plus two sixth. All right? Because that's what these two equal. They equal two sixth. So what's the common denominator, common denominator between one third and two sixth? Well, it's gonna be six. So that's gonna stay the same. Six goes into six once times two is two. Three goes into six twice times one is two. The denominator is the same. Now we can just add them. So what do we have here? Four six. Okay. Just wanted to show you number five there. Some of you might have been intimidated by that. The answer would be four six. And I had mentioned earlier about reducing some of these. They did that at the top of the page. Can you think of a number that would go into both of those? Yeah. Two. Two goes into four twice and two goes into six three times so if you reduced it <clears throat> it would be two thirds all right next page this is page 280 looking at the top here problem solving and uh, let's see it's here explain why the denominator six in three six is not changed when adding the fractions so here's the two fractions we're looking at. We're looking at 3 6 and 1 3rd. And whoever was doing this, um, 3 6 is equal to 3 6, and then 1 3rd is equal to 2 6. Well, um, explain why it's not changed because we use 6 as the common denominator. So it would stay the same. You put a comma, so it would stay the same. I think that's what they're looking for. Let's look at number seven here. It says about one-tenth of the bones in your body are in your skull. Your hands have about one-quarter of the bones in your body. Write an equation to find the fraction of bones in your body that are your hands and your skull. So the skull is one-tenth. Hands are one-quarter. So what are we doing here? We're just simply adding one-tenth plus one-quarter. Okay. Um, what's the common denominator? Well, you know, uh, again, I've shown you guys a couple different ways to, to figure this out. One way is you could write down 10 and start doing multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, whoops, 30 and 40 and 50. I'll stop there. And then I could do multiples of four. So four, eight, 12, 
16, 20. Well, there's a hit right there. Uh, looks like the lowest one's going to be 20. So that would be the common denominator I would use. So I'll put that right here, 20 and 20. 10 goes into 20 twice. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 goes into 20 how many times? 5 times. 5 times 1 is 5. Well, now what do I do? I add the top. Since the denominator is the same, now I can just add or subtract or do whatever is necessary. 2 and 5 is 7. So the answer would be 7 twentieths. Okay. Number 8. It says, um, of the 36 chemical elements, two are named for women, scientists, and 25 are named for places. What fraction of these 36 elements are named for women or places? So think about this. We're going to be adding 2 and 25, and that's going to be over what? That's going to be 27 over what? I'll let you guys figure that one out. 27 over what? Number nine. We got going here. It says Roger made a table showing how he spends his time in one day. So it looks like Roger put down work, sleep, meals, computer. How many days will go by before Roger has slept the equivalent of one day? Okay. So explain how you found your answer. So this is what we're talking about, sleeping right here. Slept equivalent of one day. So he sleeps three-eighths of a day. I'm going to put down three-eighths right here. So... Um, I don't think I've mentioned this in the last couple days. If I was to write down, if I was to write down a fraction, let's say, um, 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 two fifths, and then I ask you to represent this as a whole using that denominator, you would write five fifths. That represents one. That represents a whole. This represents part of this whole. Two-fifths of this whole. So anytime you want to represent one or a whole, you would put, you would have the same numerator and denominator. So seven over seven is equal to one. Nine over nine is equal to one. Um, 128,000 over 128,000 is equal to 1. So going back to this, it says explain how you found your answer. So, so 3 eighths is how much he sleeps. So if I wanted to represent three-eighths as a whole, using eight as the denominator, it would be eight over eight. That's going to be equivalent to one. So it says, how many days will go by before Roger has slept the equivalent of one day? Well, in one day, in one day, he sleeps three-eighths. So if he sleeps that much in one day, in two days, it'd be three-eighths plus what? Three-eighths. This would be one day. This would be the second day. So three and three is six, so that'd be six-eighths. So if we added one more three-eighths, what would that be? That would then be nine-eighths which is a little bit bigger than eight eighths. So it would take, I guess you could say three days. I'll just write it down here, three days. We'll have to do some more problems like that. Okay, uh, bottom of the page. 
10 and 11 here, it says, which equations are true when one half is placed in the box? Oh, okay. So, um, here's the first one. Um, let's see here, one half plus five over five equals three over two. Well, I don't know if that's right or not. Let's find out. Here's one half plus five over five, which is actually equivalent to one. Remember what I said a couple minutes ago? Anytime you have the numerator the same as the denominator, that's equal to one. And so um, knowing that actually, I know this is one, I could write this as one and one half, okay? Now, I don't think in the lessons that we've had, they've talked about reducing. Um, we've had some fractions where the numerator was larger than the denominator, but let me show you how to do that. One and one half is actually equal to three over two. And here's how I know. So three over two, how many times does two fit into three? It fits in one time. What's left over? What's two from three? Well, there's one left over and the denominator would stay the same. So three over two is equal to one and one half. So I'm gonna put, um, uh, so which equations are true when one half is placed in the box? I'll just put a check there because that one would be true. All right, um, let's look at another one here. Let's look at the second one. One-tenth plus two-fifths is equal to one-half. Let's see if that's right. Here's one-tenth. Here's two-fifths. Okay, let's add those together. What's the common denominator? Well, it's going to be 10, obviously. So that's going to stay the same. Five goes into 10 twice times two is four. So what do we have? Four plus one is five-tenths. Reduce that five-tenths. Yeah, what number will go into both of these evenly? Well, five does. How many times does five go into five? Once. How many times does five go into 10? Twice. So, that one also works. Because it says, which equations are true when one half is placed in the box? One half, one half. Those are true. So, these will take you a few minutes to do. Um, let's see here. Let's look at this one. This is easy. One half plus one half. What's a half plus a half? That's a whole. Is a quarter equal to a whole? No. So that's not, that's not one. And then one sixth plus one third. Well, again, we can just do this here really quick. One sixth plus one-third. What's the common denominator? Six. That's going to stay one-sixth. Three goes into, or yeah, three goes into six twice, plus one is, or times one is two. So that's going to be three-sixths. Okay. Can we reduce three-sixths? Yeah, we sure can. What number will fit into both of those evenly? Three does. How many times does three go into three? Once. How many times does three go into six? Twice. So that's one half. So that's also true. So three of those are true. So I'm going to let you guys do the second set, 11 on your own. And uh, yeah, kept it under 15 minutes. Here we go.